I'll be introducing our uh, guest speaker. Our speaker is uh, Police Superintendent Sabino Diangson. Uh, she completed her medical studies at the Fatima College of Medicine. Uh, was officially appointed as a medical legal officer in November 1, 1999. And she was given the main task of handling medical legal examinations involving women and children who are victims of abuse and domestic violence. While in service, uh, Sabina Diongson took the opportune time to take her Bachelor of Laws at the Manuel L. Quezon University School of Law. As a medical legal officer, a doctor, and a police officer at the same time, Sabina Diongson performs a unique role alongside the other members of the Philippine National Police. She is currently a forensic investigator, expert dealing with cases on heinous crimes of rape, murder, homicide, child abuse, and domestic violence, among others. Sabi Sabina Diongson has received numerous service performance and civilian awards. And she continues to do work in increasing awareness of violence against women and the need to protect women's humans, human rights through community-based crime prevention programs. Classmates, it's my privilege and honor to introduce our guest speaker, Police Superintendent Grace Sabina Bianza. Um, good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Nice to be here. Okay. Um, today we will be discussing a law um, passed by our legislators protecting women and children, and that is Republic Act 1962, otherwise known as the Anti-Violence Against Women and Their Children Act of 2004. Actually, this law um, um, encountered so many problems even before its passage because um, way back 1980s and 1990s, no one would um, endeavor, no one would like to uh, take the challenge of initiating the passage of this law. And now, um, we are very, very happy that the year 2004, one law protecting uh, women and children has been passed. The law was signed on March 8, 2004, and um, became effective on March 27, 2004. This is a special law which, um, part and parcel of which um, will give us a thought that it uh, protect, we, uh, protects women and children. But the question is, how about the men? <laughs> That's the biggest question because I have seen here, um, maybe one half of this class are women and one half are men. So if we, we will be dealing only with women, how about the men? Yes. The answer is, I do not know. <laughs> it's all depend, uh, it would only depend on the men, especially those Filipinos, siempre, um, residing here, to show off to our legislators that you too are victims of violence. <laughs> because women came out, we have statistics, we have records to hold on. That's why this law was passed. But how about the men? Those who are showing macho effect, doesn't want to cry, doesn't want to come out in the open. As they say, bahala kayo sa buhay din. Uh, in English, in English, to, to hell with you. <laughs> Just joking, baka paglabas ko. When, when I go out here, uh, I will not be able to uh, see sir here anymore. I will not be introducing, giving me kind comments already. So this is a law penalizing uh, violation or committing a crime against a woman and her child. This is considered to be a public crime. When I say this is considered to be a public crime here, anyone other than the um, the victim himself, uh, the, the victim herself, or the her child can file a case. Anyone who has personal knowledge with regard to the commission of the alleged crime or violation against women and children can file a case. We will see later on who are the ones who can file 
uh, cases against the alleged perpetrator or the alleged suspect. So we have uh, the law incorporated in there, civil action as well as criminal action, and with a bonus of then uh, the remedy of uh, protection orders. Again, later we will be discussing one by one what are these protection orders that can be uh, sought by the woman and her child. Let's discuss first the salient features of this law. Violence against women and their children is defined as any act or series of acts committed by any person against a woman who is his wife or former wife against a woman with whom the person has or had sexual or dating relationship or to whom he has a common child. So under this law, it is not necessary that a man and a woman are married or there is a marriage bond. It simply says, those who have relationship, dating, sexual, casual, normal relationship, it doesn't specify. It is committed against her child whether legitimate or illegitimate. So it doesn't classify. Uh, we're, we're seeing or we're hearing uh, reactions. Are there anyone here? Particularly, um, who has filed a case of violation, or I mean, um, otherwise, none. Okay, let's continue. It can be committed within or without the family abode. When I say family abode, it can be committed anywhere else in your working place, in the place where, you, where the family would frequently go to, in the park anywhere else so it is uh, it can it can likely be resulted to or um, resulted to physical sexual psychological or economic abuse again one by one we will be discussing what are the acts constituting these kinds of types of violence encompasses encompasses here in the um, law as stated in Section 3, economic abuse would include battery, I mean the violence, not, not particularly economic uh, abuse. It can be uh, battery or battered woman syndrome, it can be assault, it can be deprivation of liberty, it can be harassment. And who are being protected by this law? Women and their children. As stated in the uh, United Nations Convention on the Rights of Children, children are um, defined as those who are below 18 years of age or those who may be older than 18 years old but they are not capable of taking good care of themselves or they are not capable of supporting themselves. They may have um, psychological or mental um, illnesses. They may be physically they may be um, 21 years old, but their mental age is 8 years old, as determined by the psychologist or the psychiatrist. Or they may be 75 years old, but their mental age is only 10 years old. They are considered to be <coughs> children also. Who are liable? The husband, former husband, the boyfriend, former boyfriend, the live-in partners, or those to whom the child has a, a, the, the woman has a common child, or to whom he has or she has sexual or dating relationship. So practically anyone, any man can be charged. Yes, ma'am. So this is just for heterosexual. Um, it can be um, for those LGBT man. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, when, when I say LGBT, the lesbian, the les lesbian relationship, gay relationship also. What is sexual relations? 
it refers to a single sexual act which may or may not result in bearing of a common child. So even one sexual act. And the alleged partner or alleged um, sexual partner complained that she has been violated. She can file a case against the man. Even a prostituted woman can file a case against the alleged customer. The man are looking at me. Why? Yes, sir. I have the complaint against the word prostituted. Yes, a, a prostituted woman um, should not be prostituted. Sex worker, a woman, <laughs> is a woman. Yes, uh, but in our but in our parlance, um, they made it clear that women um, who may have had uh, this kind of I mean um, selling themselves quote unquote they are prostituted because um, apparently it may not be on her own volition, but there are some other factors that uh, pushed her. To become one. But as a development practitioner, it's my urge to give all others. Okay. To be advocated. Okay. That will be clear. For to you. Yes. Thank you for that. What is then dating relationship? It uh, has living in without the benefit of a marriage, those live in partners or live in uh, relationships. Romantically involved over time and on a continuing basis during the course of the relationship. Something happened. A man, by accident or by incident, has assaulted, has uh, harassed, or deprived the woman of her liberty. Again, violation of the law under Section 3. What are the punishable acts? Or what are the specific acts constituting violation of this law? Physical violence, it refers to bodily harm or inflicting physical injuries. So, it may be a result of battery and frustrated parasite. The, the attempt to kill the woman or the attempt to kill the child. Sexual violence, it refers to an act which is sexual in nature. It could either be rape, or in medical parlance, sexual abuse, sexual harassment, or prostituting the woman or her child. Because there are cases wherein the man or his cohorts are acting as pimp or pimps. Just to have that monetary consideration. <coughs> Causing or attempting to make the woman or her child perform sexual acts which may not uh, constitute rape, but with the use of force, threat, intimidation, it was directed against the woman and her child. Number three would be psychological violence. It would uh, refer to the acts that cause mental or emotional suffering to the victim. Like for example, common, common disease cases, marital infidelity. Uh, to the woman, it would be um, emotionally harming, seeing or knowing that her husband has another wife, another uh, woman, or living in with another woman. More so if that man and his partner has a child already, it uh, becomes emotional, uh, emotionally harming to the uh, on the part of the woman. Also, public humiliation, cursing, saying bad words to the woman in front of other people. It is so humiliating. Yes, sir. And this is a vague uh, policy, you know, because uh, everybody can be humiliated by even by non-harsh words. So, how how do you defend those uh, accused in that if that's the case also? Um, well, when we say public humiliation, a man uh, who has. Well, uh, uh, not don't use man also only because women can curse other women also yes uh, but uh, what we are saying here is that um, who are liable 
um, in committing this kind of violence. Specifically stated in the law, husband, former husband, boyfriend, former boyfriend, live in partners. So this is not actually a law against violence uh, in protection of women, but it is a law against the harassment of men. Because they, the law cannot actually uh, uh, protect women against other women. If that's the case. It can be. It can. Uh, it can uh, be encompassed in live-in partners or for those who have dating or sexual relationship. So, Not only because, uh, um, as was um, uh, asked earlier, it can be committed by LGBT, uh, lesbian, gay. So whoever um, is the is the victim, the ma I mean the, the gay or the lesbian can also be a victim of this uh, violence. LGBT. The gay and the lesbian? Yeah. How can you classify now if, if you say that even the gay can be considered a victim? It is under dating or sexual relationship. So a man a man can complain under uh, the law? Uh, the gay. The gay or the lesbian partner can complain or file a complaint against the man who had inflicted um, physical violence, sexual violence, um, economic uh, abuse to her or psychological. This is already not a uh, uh, good law because uh, the, the mere fact that uh, a, any man can tell him that he is gay, you know. Well, um, the law may be harsh, but it is still the law. It specifically protects women and children. No. Now, you, now, you're as actually stated, saying that uh, it protects gay. Gay are not women. Yeah, but as stated in the law, particularly in Section 3, yeah. that those who had dating or sexual relationship or in live in, living in relationship. So it's not a law in, in protection of women? <laughs> uh, it encompasses women and children. Oh. <laughs> um, we cannot do anything because um, it is the law passed by our legislators and it has been signed uh, by our president and so it took effect. Um, if we say that this is not a good law, so be it. Um, we, can, we can make um, lobbying to the Congress or to the Senate um, telling our good legislators that uh, the, the law that you have passed is not good and so we are offering these amendments. In order for you to satisfy whatever um, so you have something in mind. But I tell you, um, the law may be harsh, but it is the law. This, this can be misinterpreted a lot of ways. Maybe so. Um, each it, one it of us used, here... It can be used against women themselves. Now, that's a danger. Yeah. Well, um, in all our endeavors, there may be risks, there may be harm that can go against um, the one we are protecting. But then again, uh, I... I, I I can clearly say that um, this law specifically protects women and violence, uh, the vi uh, women um, and ch children against violence. It's not violence. very specific, ma'am, because it's, it's, it can be, you, you say it can be applied to gays. In it's a no relationship, uh, I should qualify that. In a relationship, lesbian relationship. So if the two, uh, one gay and one lesbian are in a relationship, and the water is <laughs> no, okay. no, 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 no. Um, we, may, we, we may have uh, some misconception and misinterpretation regarding this law. Um, but what um, is, is clearly said in the law, again, um, it is being committed by a husband, a former husband, a boyfriend, a former boyfriend, a live-in partner. And those to whom the woman has Dated, I, I mean a dating relationship or a sexual relationship. Is there no other provision in the in this law that uh, protects the abuse? Uh, I said earlier, there is none. <coughs> there is none. Um, the, the best remedy for this would be a man, if the man was uh, assaulted or was uh, harmed by the woman, the man can file a criminal case under the revised penal law, physical injuries in particular. Or, or if it may cost him his life, parricide or attempted or frustrated parricide. I've learned in the revised penal code that uh, a slap in the face has more uh, 
punishment then a uh, yes. punch in the uh, is slander. Yeah. Slander. So if I punch a woman, she is not me. It's slander. You can try a criminal case actually, but it is under the revised penal code, not under um, 9262. <laughs> Did I make myself clear with that uh, provision? Uh, this is particularly protecting women and children. Um, a disclaimer earlier was given, man has no protection under the law. In this law, the man is the antagonist. It hurts really. You'd like the lecture to proceed uh, entertain the person's Okay, okay. So, um, okay. Uh, all other questions will be entertained after the lecture. Okay. <laughs> so, let's proceed. <laughs> now, repeated verbal abuse. Again, even in front of other people or even inside the bedroom, inside the house, anywhere else. Threatening the woman that she will lose her child because some. Uh, in some other cases, there are custody battles. And the man would threaten his wife that the man will get his child. And so, um, the woman has no other remedy but to, um, but to stay in a relationship with that man. She doesn't want to be separated or there, there is like, unlikely that um, there would be a declaration of nullity of marriage or um, legal separation. Is talking or following the woman in her workplace, in school, or any public or private place without justification. So a man cannot just go and uh, see the wife or even the children 50 um, meters away. That is what we call this chero. This is not a penalty, but this is a way wherein a woman has to be protected and the man should stay away 50 meters from her and her children. So as for economic violence, it refers to acts that makes, a, uh, makes or attempt a woman to be financially dependent. The woman is being deprived of practicing her own profession. Say, if I am a doctor, I am a lawyer, and my husband would not permit me to practice my profession. By and now, I can file a case <coughs> against him. Or if they have a business and the man solely manages the business. Not giving adequate financial support to the wife and or her children. Even medical support. If the acts are committed in the presence of the woman's child, or if the woman or child is pregnant, the penalty is one degree higher. If the penalty imposed is um, prison mayor, then it can be, I uh, can be prison correctional, and then it can be prison mayor. Ten, uh, six years and one day, two, at least, 10 years, and 12 years, and one day. It would really depend on the some judgment of the court or the family court hearing the case. If, for example, the man would hurt the pet. Pet. Pet dog. Cat. That's already in Yeah. It can also be encompassed in here. If the man would hurt anyone who is staying with them, either the niece or the nephew of the woman, can the man be held liable? Definitely, yes. Now, let's discuss what is battered woman syndrome or what we call BWS. It is scientifically defined part of psychological as well as behavioral symptoms found in women living in battering relationship as a result of cumulative abuses. So we have this case here in the Philippines where in the Supreme Court has a judge, a woman, I will not mention the name because of confidentiality. She, uh, the woman was a judge 
not guilty. And so the case was dismissed. She shot her husband using the husband's own gun. So doing, the man died. The relatives of this man filed a criminal case against the woman. It has been invoked and used as a defense, battered woman syndrome, because accordingly, upon the examination of a psychiatrist, there really exists a battered woman syndrome to that woman. It has already been promulgated 2007. And so the man just died like that. It's because of his own doing, according to the Supreme Court of the Philippines. The woman has no criminal as well as civil liability. But what about if she is in a government service or government office? Can she be held liable administratively? Yes. But, again, she can use this as a defense. So somehow the penalty would be one degree lower. So if the, if the penalty given by the summary hearing officer would be um, 60 days suspension, it can be lowered to just admonition. So what are the penalties imposed for those men <coughs> are judged to be or um, uh, found to be guilty violating any of the provisions of the law? Accordingly, uh, uh, in Section 6, imprisonment based on the provisions of the Revised Penal Code. So we will always be referring to the penalties imposed under the Revised Penal Code. It would really depend if the alleged case is physical injuries or homicide or murder or parricide. It would really depend. And the fine ranging from 100,000 to 300,000 pesos. Much lower. And mandatory psychological as well as psychiatric treatment. Because according to psychiatrists, um, Hurting somebody or hurting someone is a psychological disorder. He or she may have, I mean, uh, the man may have been suffering from um, a psychological disorder as a result of prior or previous abuses inflicted upon him when he was still a child. Actually, the issue here. In domestic violence would be the issue on power and control. Plus, the alleged perpetrator has or had experienced traumatic uh, abuses, which was not addressed appropriately. There was no psychological um, therapy or psychiatric therapy as the case may be. What are the remedies for these victims? The woman and her child can avail of the, what we call, barangay protection order or um, the temporary protection order as well as the uh, permanent protection order. When I say barangay, for those who are not familiar, barangay would mean village. And she can also file concomitantly a criminal action against the perpetrator. So what is a protection order? It is an order issued under that for the purpose of preventing further acts of violence. This can protect the woman and her child from being hurt again by the man. It is specifically stated in Section 7 of the Implementing Rules and Regulations of this law. The purposes of which would be to safeguard the victim from further harm, it minimizes any disruption in the victim's daily life. Because when a woman was hurt or was battered, 
there are cases that um, she may have physical manifestation. She may not be able to report to work because she has bruises, she has contusions, or what have you. She cannot concentrate on doing her job. It also prohibits the man from committing or threatening any of the punishable acts mentioned earlier. The removal and exclusion from the residence regardless of the ownership. This is the sad part. The man may have bought the house and the lot, but he will be the one who should be expelled from his own home. Taken by the man. His jewelry, his watch, his um, his shirt, his pants, only personal effects. Other than that, all others will be left and should be left inside the home. <coughs> It facilitates the opportunity and ability of the victim to independently regain control over her life. Now, this is what I'm saying. For those who may have personal knowledge regarding the commission of any of the acts of violence against a woman and child, they can file a complaint. So specifically in section 9, the offended party herself or her child can find a complaint. The parents or the guardian of the offended party. Ascendants or descendants or collateral relatives up to the full court civil degree. When I say ascendants of the the uh, grandfather, grandmother of the um, the woman, descendants, the children, collateral relatives, the cousins, the uncles, the aunts, up to the fourth civil degree of consanguinity or affinity. Father-in-law, mother-in-law, who doesn't love their child, can file a complaint against that man. The officers and social workers of the Department of Social Work, Work, Welfare and Development, the local government units handling specifically cases of women and children. Those police officers, especially those who are assigned or work assigned at the Women and, protection, uh, women and Children Protection Desk, plus the village captain or the village councillor. Why are they included? Because according to the law, they are the ones who can issue the barangay protection order. And so, they acquire personal knowledge with regard to the acts being complained of by the victim. This is in exception to the hearsay rule. You can even file a complaint. When I say hearsay, a because man, a, 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 a officer, or like for uh, in this case, case, the village chief, the lawyer, the counselor, the therapist, and the healthcare the providers, for psychology, psychiatrists, nurses, doctors, but in here, social the workers, you or can, those who might have had involvement in this case. Two concerned responsible citizens of the city or municipality who may have personal knowledge of the commission of this offense. And who are those responsible members of the community? The neighbors. They may have personal knowledge because they can hear what's going on. They can see what's happening to the woman and their child. And where to apply these protection orders? The Barangay Protection Order, Section 14, can, will be issued by the 
village captain or village councilor. Only the two of them are allowed by the law to issue such protection order. It should be served personally to the respondent, when I say the respondent, the, the alleged perpetrator, the man. Orders the offender to desist from committing or threatening physical harm to the victim. And it is only effective for 15 days. It can be extended, but it cannot be renewed. It is extendable, but not, uh, but, uh, not renewable. I mean, not renewable. Because there are other options, aside from the BPO. Aside from the Barangay Protection Order, the um, woman and the children can avail of the Temporary Protection Order. As stated in Section 15, the court to whom it has jurisdiction or territorial jurisdiction on the place where the alleged incident was committed can issue such ex parte even without the presence of the respondent the case can be heard by the court if the court can determine by and in itself that there is a probable cause as well as um, the justification that such temporary protection order should be issued in order to protect the woman and her child from further, further harm and so the court can issue such. It can be applied in family court but I tell you here in the Philippines there are places wherein there is no family court. There is still no family court. It can be applied um, with the regional trial court, the municipal trial court, the metropolitan trial court, and the municipal circuit trial court. Who has jurisdiction over the place of commission? It is issued with notice of hearing to be personally served by the sheriff, the court sheriff. It is effective for 30 days. Now, as to the permanent protection order under Section 16, it is issued by the court after due notice and proper hearing. We may have had heard of um, celebrities, high-profile personalities having this one. Question. If during the trial of this case, the period for the temporary protection order has already lapsed. What is the best thing to do? What is the um, best option for a woman? Best option. We say it is only effective for 30 days. Can the court issue another protection order? Not until after the termination of the case. Yes. yes. The court can order for the temporary protection or she can also um, issue the permanent protection order. If after the termination of the case, there was already a promulgation, there was already decision regarding the um, complaint, can the permanent protection order be issued again? Yes. <coughs> can it be issued again? Yes. It's already permanent. And so if the court will not terminate or will not um, um, issue a restraining order for that, and so it will go on and on and on until the court will determine that there will be no more harm that can be inflicted to the woman and their 
children. <coughs> so the hearing can uh, proceed um, even if the respondent has no lawyer because the government or the court can provide for him. But if the respondent fails to appear despite notice, can the court allow presentation of evidence? Yes. Yes. Because stated na po the court allows ex parte presentation of evidence. Even, um, when, when, when I say ex parte, it would mean even without the presence of that respondent, the court will continue to hear the case. To the extent possible, the court conducts hearing in just one day. He or she can render judgment based on the evidence presented. And um, upon termination of this, uh, of the, um, I, I mean the hearing of this case, the respondent will be ordered to leave the house or the residence permanently. Regardless again of ownership. And he should have or he will be uh, required to have bond to keep the peace. He will be required to deposit a sum of money to the court. Any violation thereof of the provisions as stated in the decision of the court, that bond will be forfeited in favor of the government and he can be arrested and jailed. So the court may uh, grant any of all the following reliefs, lawful possession and use of the automobile, and other essential personal effects by petitioner, regardless of ownership. If the court says, leave your car, leave everything to your wife, to your children, the man cannot do anything. All you can bring is your personal effects. Better yet, do not buy anything. Just rent a house and rent a car. Anything that may happen, nothing to lose. Temporary or permanent custody of children to the petitioner. The, uh, the custody of the children will be given to the petitioner even if she is or she may be suffering from battered woman syndrome. The respondent will be removed or excluded from the residence of the petitioner either temporarily or permanently where no property rights are being violated. <coughs> now, in support of the children, appropriate percentage or salary of the respondent will be withheld regularly by his employer and will be given or remitted directly to the petitioner. How can we determine that percentage? If, for example, the man is earning only about um, 9,000 pesos per week, how much would, uh, how much of that salary be given to the woman and her child? The answer is, it would really depend on the needs of the children. If they are enrolled, in a private school, commensurate to that would be the payment of the tuition fee. Not only that, the daily support, the medical expenses, the clothing. So it would be determined by the court on how much would be given to the woman and their child. Any delay without justifiable cause constitute indirect contempt of court. Again, there is a corresponding penalty for that violation of the um, court order. Use or possession of any firearms or deadly weapon is prohibited, including revocation as well as disqualification from obtaining a license for that um, gun. 
if the perpetrator is a law enforce, enforcement officer, he shall surrender his firearm to his immediate superior. Respondent is prohibited from threatening to commit or committing personally through another person any of the acts previously mentioned. So, if a man would ask somebody, either his brother, his cousin, his co-employee, to go and see the wife on what, uh, on what they are doing, he cannot do so because he is being prohibited by the law. Now, there would be corresponding restitution or payment of actual damages caused by the violence inflicted to the alleged victim survivors. Respondent is prohibited from harassing, annoying, telephone, or even contacting or communicating with the petitioner, either directly or indirectly. Cell phone, text messages, um, chatting, using the social network, he cannot do so. Much more, he cannot see or he cannot even go to the places being frequented by the woman and their child. Respondent is directed to stay away from the petitioner or the how, a family or household member at a specified distance and that is 50 meters away from the residence, from the school, place of work, or any other places. Movie house, park, places of socials. <coughs> the law may be harsh, <coughs> but it is still harsh. This of a new their appropriate agency to provide the necessary temporary shelter if there is no residence or um, there is no place wherein this woman and child can stay during the duration of the uh, filing of the complaint. And the court may um, also give other necessary reliefs which is uh, needed or will be needed by the victims. Now, important thing to remember, issuance of the Barangay Protection Order or during its pendency, it will not preclude the petitioner from applying for temporary as well as permanent protection order. So, if um, if there is already a barangay protection order, on the fifth day, the woman decided that she will be filing a petition for temp uh, issuance of temporary protection order or permanent protection order, she can do so. She is at liberty to file one. So, as already mentioned, the custody of the children will be given to the, man, the woman, even if she is suffering from battered woman syndrome. And the protection order is enforceable anywhere in the Philippines. Even if you are living in Luzon, in Visayas, in Mindanao, it is, it can be strictly enforced by the law enforcement officers. Now, violation thereof is punishable with a penalty of uh, 5,000 to 5,000 pesos and imprisonment of 6 months. Clearly stated in section 12. The good thing in here is that the prescriptive period for the filing of, of, of that complaint is 10 or 20 years. It would really depend on the acts committed. So up to 20 years, the woman can file that petition. Just like rape cases, just like murder. Now, these persons or personalities are protected from suit because there will always be presumption of regularity in the performance of their duties. Police officers, social workers, <coughs> private individuals, as well as other government officials. They cannot be held liable either civilly, criminally, or administratively. Now, the rights of the victims, um, for sure, they have, they have the right to be protected. They have the right to be respected and to uphold their dignity. Also, they, the government should give appropriate support to them. And mind you, 
disclosure of any or all of the records pertaining to um, this case is punishable by you. So we should be maintaining strict confidentiality as well as respect the right of privacy of the victims. The records, the blatter, the social case study should not be seen by just anybody. An additional 10 day paid leave from work aside from the um, present, the present uh, the, uh, being given to the uh, or accorded to the victim is being given. So if the woman uh, has filed a mandatory leave of 5 days, she can be given additional 10 days. Now as to the effectiveness of the law, this is um, um, with regard to um, Letting us know what this, uh, what the, what, um, what can uh, it be done? What can be done in order for the improvement? Let's try to uh, dissect the effectiveness of this law. The law is a product of operation of women's rights organization and legislators, and hence the comprehensive remedies were provided. The Barangay Protection Order is available even to the poor of the poorest women living in rural areas with no easy access to the courts. The protection orders are being increasingly used by women to protect themselves, to get support because nowadays, uh, filing of petition for support would take at least one year to two years. Unlike in here, availing of the remedies of this law in just one day, the law can hear the case. Supreme Court issued a rule on the violence against women and their children governs the trade of the case. So we have a system in order to monitor cases of Bausi. Government officials, including the judges, are prohibited from mediating. There will be no mediation in this kind of case. There will be no arbitration in this kind of cases. Yes, ma'am? This is not, um, like, because it is faster to get child support under this law. Yes, ma'am. Is it not being used by women who have children to get support for their children instead of fighting their regular child support? Actually, ma'am, uh, this is one big problem that we are encountering. This law is now being abused. The law which supposedly protect the abuse is now being abused by the one we are protecting because of the provisions stated. Yeah. You are correct with that. Yes, ma'am. It would really depend on the family court on how fast they can fast track the uh, hearing of the case uh, when you file a civil complaint or I mean, a civil application for uh, support, which is civil in nature. But, but in here, it, it can only take one day. But this is a criminal case. That one, that, that, that one is, it can be just a civil case, you're just asking for justice. Yes, ma'am. This one is a criminal case. This is civil as well as criminal, ma'am, ah. because of the uh, presence of the remedies as well as the protection so, orders. So, yeah, women can abuse the law. Exactly, exactly. It's been 10 years now, uh, last March 27, that it took effect, and so there are already a lot of cases. Maybe uh, maybe we will be discussing later the, the problems that we had encountered, the lessons uh, being encountered, and the challenges also. Now, local government units are tasked with education campaign to eliminate uh, violence against women, but are they effective? <coughs> The question is, are they effective in um, their uh, awareness campaign? Because as days go by, as years go by, there is an increase in the incidence of domestic violence. And this is being supported by ISTA from our uh, Directorate for Investigation and Detective Management who has a system uh, in monitoring the, the commission or the violation of this law, there is, a steady, there is a steady increase. 
And what brought about this steady increase in the statistics? The reporting system. For all you know, they already had enough knowledge with regard to this, and so they now start going to the women's desk, to the women and children protection desk of their respective local government units, as well as in the village or in the barangay. Now, there is also mechanism for government implementers and the support services. It is in place. It is already in place. And we are working hand-in-hand uh, -hand with the Department of Social Welfare and Development, the Department of Justice, and all other stakeholders um, of VAUSI. There is also interagency on uh, violence against women, which is being provided by the law. And uh, enumerated in the implementing rules and regulations are the specific roles of these implementers. Now, let's go to the problems, the gaps, and the lessons, which to us is a great challenge. The law does not provide for appropriations or funding uh, for training of implementers and support services for the woman. As always, this is the perennial problem. Sorry, Lack of funds. Yes, what's, what's the conviction rate? Like for every uh, complaint alleged, how, how, how many actually get convicted? According to our statistics, ma'am, in our case monitoring, um, there are at least three cases, after three convictions out of ten cases. Sad to say. Sad to say. That's why it's a big challenge for all of us to work hand in hand. Because somewhere along the way, the pillars of justice might have had interventions. So, sorry, but, yeah, I, I, no problem. Problem. but the other thing I, I wanted to say was I, I've had friends who've been raped, right? And they, they've, uh, it's, it's forensic evidence is still really strong and it, they don't get prosecuted. So, um, is there a protocol? Like some girls I know who. Um, they don't even know you're supposed to go to the hospital and get a rape kit. So yes, exactly. The biggest, um, One of the biggest challenges would be on the awareness campaign because uh, not all victims would know where to go. Um, they may have the, the, the condition to file a complaint, but then again, um, I said somewhere along the way, there are uh, intervening factors. So, do they say that, you mean the forensic evidence is really strong, right? That you don't go to the hospital and get a rape um, um, in one of the studies that was conducted by the Department of Justice, um, they may have a strong case, for example, uh, the, the forensic evidence. But forensic of evidence are only corroborative. Um, the primary evidence that can be used would be the testimony given by the alleged victim. So it would boil down to the credibility of the witness. And, and um, maybe we will be discussing later because of the intervening factors. The case may be um, dropped, may be um, dismissed. Yeah. We will be discussing that later. Okay. Um, second problem would be the alleged corruption in the judiciary and prosecution services. Um, again, we may have a strong case initially, but that strong case or that winning case may lose or may be lost somewhere along the way because of these intervening factors. Um, the prosecution would move for the dismissal of the case because of the non-appearance of the uh, petitioner. They said one of the justification or one of the causes would be the failure to prosecute the case. If in criminal case, the victim or the, uh, the complainant will not appear on the scheduled hearing for at least twice or thrice, the defense would move for the provisional dismissal of the case. Some other factors would be 
initially the, the address given by the complainant would be in Quezon City. But because of the uh, delay in the hearings, it took the court to decide in, uh, uh, to hear the case in two years. That woman and their child may have had transferred to Makati City. And so, the summon or the notices of the court was not delivered and received personally by the complainant. And because she has no, uh, she was, she has no knowledge with regard to the schedule of the hearing. She's that uh, she may not be able to attend the hearing. The sheriff, um, though they may are, they they, they may uh, they may um, exert extra effort locating the complainant, but then. There are cases, no, uh, no person found on this address. Even if they will ask the barangay captain or the village captain, they would not know because the woman will not um, notify them. Because of that lack of notification, the case can be dismissed provisionally upon the, um, upon the motion of the defense counsel. Now, low level of gender sensitivity among police investigators, admittedly, prosecutors and other pillars of the criminal justice system. There are those, I am not saying all of them, there are those who are not that sensitive to the needs of the victim survivors. As you can hear in so many um, news reports, <coughs> Police officer here, police officer there. They are the ones victimizing the victims. I heard a loud yes because it's true. Based on observation, based on personal experience. And they would not allow you to ask questions while being interviewed either by the um, prosecutor or the police investigator you may you may hear harsh words from them and so the complainant will lose the conviction to file a case you are the victim or they are the victim and yet they are being victimized again by the supposed support services. Ignorance of the law by police officers admittedly again, who are not in the women's and children's deaths. Especially those who are assigned in the far flank areas. Mind you, shocks of all shocks in my life, in Maginda now, they do, don't, don't even know that there exists Republic Act 7610 or the law protecting children against abuse, discrimination, and exploitation. Much, much more in here, it is only 10 years old. Do we expect them to know the law? Supposedly. But again, I said, if they are not assigned with the Women and Children Protection Desk, they do not care anymore. But what about if during the we are of the night, they are on duty? Or they are the ones on duty? And here comes the victim want, uh, want, wanted to file a complaint. She will be advised to go back morning after. If you don't have enough money or extra money for your fare, what will you do? Just stay at home and you will, will not file a case anymore. That's the sad part. Lack of quality gender sensitivity seminars for judges who are not assigned to the family courts or are not family court judges. For how do these judges know the laws 
regarding uh, violence against women and children if they are not handling such cases. They don't have any specialization. They may be handling drug cases, they may be handling heinous crimes, but not violence against women and children. The misuse of the laws and rules of uh, and rules by the lawyers. Again, in our justice system, the law would uh, permit the filing of a counter charge against the woman filing the complaint. So it is a case of charge, counter charge. Upon the advice of the good lawyer. As we say, domestic violence has for a long time been hidden in the homes of affected families. However, its effect on the victims who are usually women and children must not be a cause for a shame and should not be ignored. The culture of silence must be broken and the domestic violence must be stopped. And so, I can also say, a man's greatest calling is to protect women. So that this woman can go and walk around the world unharmed. With this, thank you very much for listening. Uh, we can entertain uh, questions. Only two questions because of lack of material time. Um, yes, sir. Just one question. Yes, sir. Uh, from here, uh, this, uh, Mr. Tim Milan spoke. Yes. The definition of women here in this law, how has it been defined? Can I get a more? Um, actually, the definition of woman is um, so simple. A woman is a woman. Biological. Biological or transgender. No. Because, um, because nowadays, we had transgender. So we have to res uh, we have to accord respect also to them. Um, I will cite a particular case just recently, about uh, two or three days ago. This transgender went to the comfort room of a, of a females in one of the uh, malls. The guard um, uh, standing there turned him away, saying that. You should not be using this comfort room. This is for women. And so the transgender um, justified, I am a woman now. I may have uh, had, um, I may have been a transgender, but I, I consider myself a woman now. He filed, or he filed a complaint against the guard and the management of the mall. And it is now being heard um, by the uh, office of the prosecutor, finding probable cause against the guard. We should also try to consider nowadays the transgender. So even if biologically she is not a woman, but if in his own sense she wants to be a woman, so be it. This for transgender. When he was going for the gay for the same. Same. Just claiming and claiming. Yes. Um, that's the beauty of uh, understanding and having um, or according respect to them because they're also humans. They may be biologically uh, biologically man, but they consider themselves a human. We can do anything. Yes, sir. Uh, there are chances that these transgender tra transgender will also abuse their fellow women. Yes. How can you also protect those women who are in the comfort room of women? That's the case. Privacy. Right to right, right, privacy. They are in the comfort room. Uh, comfort room in public places are comfort rooms that can be used by, just, by just anyone. Uh, specifically, specifically uh, being gender sensitive, it should be for uh, women only. But again, they are claiming that they are women deep inside. But the, genetically, they still have a uh, Y chromosome. Yes, exactly. Genetically, uh, biologically, science would tell us they are men or they are men. But again, um, according due respect to the person, in their selves or in themselves, they are women. So we have to respect them. Human rights. That will complicate uh, gender laws. Uh, it may be so. Again, 
but I, uh, it, will, it will boil down to the fact that we have to respect each other's rights. Any more questions? Thank you very much for listening. I do hope and pray you have learned something about this. And um, coming from Maguindanao, going here to give lecture for just one hour is worth, worth it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Grace. So, um, as talking of our gratitude to your uh, valuable lecture, we have our president, our chairman of our student council, uh, Mr. Kun. We learned a lot, and we are very